before we get started, let's get on here. We're set. Hey folks, this is Rotor Storm 331 back to doing some speedrunning, mainly doing a tutorial of Final Fight 2 Hagar Easy Any Percent. Now, this has been on my mind for quite a while. Normally I'd be speedrunning this, but today I feel like I need to pass on my knowledge to others in case anyone does get interested of, uh, of uh, running a uh, Final Fight 2. Now, of course, this is not an easy game to speedrun. Granted, I myself have pretty much struggled, but other than that, if you're very patient like I am, it will it could be somewhat rewarding. But technically this game could be easily run on easy mode. Now, when I first started uh, speedrunning in this game in 2014, I initially did it on expert mode. And after my failed attempt to get this uh, submitted to Awesome um, speed, speed Demos Archives, and failed to be submitted, uh, Murphy Gator gave me, um, posted a link on that that thread about uh, the, damage, the damage formula for the game. And unfortunately, that formula also indicated that the game doesn't really have a very high damage output like uh, Final Fight 1 and 3 do. But still, overall, it gave me some lessons to learn. And despite not having gotten that game into the uh, Speed Demos Archives uh, game list for eligible speedruns. I did learn a lot afterwards. I had to go back and look at everything I did wrong, trying to find new stuff and make things a bit faster, among other things. But anyway, today I feel like it's time for me to do some tutorials on this. Now, for my tutorial of Final Fight 2, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to probably be divided by parts. Now, today's stream is pretty much focusing mostly on introducing everyone to Final Fight 2. Uh, the differences in difficulties, Hagar's move list, the damages on them, as well as my opinions on moves and whatnot, as well as uh, going through Hong Kong and how to proceed from that point. So anyway, this game was released in the summer or late summer of 1993. And uh, this game is pretty usual, unusual because, because one thing, not only is the damage output lower, but everything is based, based on your difficulty. So how much damage your character does depends on your difficulty you set up. Now, from my experiences from playing Final Fight 2, if you play on easy and normal mode, your, your attacks will do maximum damage. But if you set the game to hard or expert mode, you will find your attacks being reduced to half than what they should be. Apparently this only this damage only applies to certain enemies in hard and expert mode, namely the Andoris, Elliot, Elias, Joe, Atlas, Johnny, uh, and all the bosses, bosses except Philippe. I think most of the normal enemies take normal damage. I am not certain that they take a uh, the same damage they would take on easy and normal, but for the most part I have noticed that all the enemies, those enemies that I fought on hard and expert, tend to take less damage than normal. So keep in mind on that if you want to try a harder expert mode. Now of course when you if you do start a new game with uh, Final Fight 2, you only have easy, normal, and hard difficulties. Now if you do want to consider running expert mode, you do need to beat the game on hard mode before you can do that. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So if you want to maximize your attack, focus on doing your speed runs on easy or normal. If you want to go for the full ending, which is expert or part of it, for hard and expert, I recommend uh, to play this game casually multiple times to get an idea of where and feel about the enemies in general. Of course, for this tutorial, we'll be doing this game on easy. Now, I set my attack buttons for... Y and B, which is the standard buttons for the game. Now, it's very important for uh, if you want to learn how to run with Hagar to set your extra joy to either X, A, L, or R. And that's for easy access. I prefer using A button, but some will probably want to use X or the shoulder buttons. Now, keep in mind that I am playing this on a Wii U VC version. 
if you do own the original Super NES console game along with the system, you're probably going to find the layout of your controller a little bit different. And of course, I will be using Create Restore Points for this tutorial. So unfortunately, one of the downsides about that is that when you create a restore point, it kind of sets the uh, AI and pattern and whatnot in stone, so you cannot manipulate it or whatever. It's probably best to do it before you move on to the next point, so that way you don't, if you do decide to practice on certain areas with the Wii U VC version, that you can uh, make sure you can get a general idea of how enemies behave and move. So that's basically it for the option mode. We're going to go out, get out of here, and uh, go to our character select screen. Now, of course, we'll be focusing on Hagar for this tutorial. He is, if you've played uh, any of the Final Fight games, he is the strongest of all the playable characters in terms of overall damage. Uh, Maki right here, who replaced this guy for this game, uh, she's the, the speedy, fast unit. Uh, player of the game. Um, problem is, is that her attacks are very weak. Uh, she, Her attack range for her punches are very pitiful, which makes it very hard for her to counterattack charges and whatnot. So she is actually the more difficult uh, player character to use in speedrunning this game. Carlos, of course, is the Cody of the game. He is pretty much well balanced in everything. Uh, he has higher damage than Maki's attacks, but it doesn't come close to matching Hagar's. Now, the big difference between the Infinites on all three characters is that Hagar's is not very fast, but the DPS for uh, Maki and Carlos's Infinites are very good. And of course, even if you are planning, planning to play as Hagar, keep in mind that you do want to learn how to learn to use the Infinite, aka Shifting because that is still a very important tool to use for speedrunning this game, especially if you need to defeat enemies pretty quickly. So we're gonna go ahead and select Hagar. I'll go ahead and create a restore point right here. And hold on one second, I'm gonna get me some more water because talking tires me out pretty quickly. I don't normally do a whole lot of talking on my stream, so my apologies if, if I stutter or have gaps in my thinking or whatever. So basically, you'll start off at Hong Kong, which is your starting point for Final Fight 2. Uh, the end point is Japan, so consider Eurasia, the Asian parts of uh, the game, to be the start and ending points of your game. And Europe is where you're going to pretty much take place, most of your fighting is going, going to take place. So, uh, Hagar is pretty much the same as uh, he was in Final Fight 1, with one notable difference. His forward jump is now is just as fast as his back jump. So, as you can tell, it's much faster and it's much better than it was in the first game. Now, uh, for the most part, he's pretty much the same, but when you do movement, when you move him up and down, he's very slow. If you move him diagonal, He's pretty much just as fast as he would on a right or left pace. So overall, he's still pretty much slow, but overall his jumping speed is actually more faster than uh, than it was in uh, Final Fight 1. And technically, you do not want to be uh, doing reverse jumps, because right there, enemies do not attack you when you're doing a forward jump. Unless, of course, you uh, try to back jump, they do attack you. Let's go back to the lower restore point. So that's very important because now that the forward jump speed is now just as fast as the back jump, there's really no point of doing the reverse jump except for certain situations. So now we go over the attacks for Hagar. So um, Hagar's punch is a body blow. It doesn't come out as fast as the regular punches that Maki and Carlos would do because this attack does have a few frames set up before it goes off. And of course, if you press the attack button pretty fast, it goes like this. Now, Hagar does have a glitch in this game where you, if you press the attack button multiple times when fighting enemies, you might get an additional hit instead of this three-hit combo. But just keep in mind that when you're getting close to enemies, that uh, 
Hagar does have a few frames of wind up before he gets his punch out. Give you a good example. Sometimes you'll get this off and then there's uh, times where your punch doesn't come out but the enemy attacks you beforehand. So anyway, the uh, punches for Hagar, for all three of them, deal 10 damage. But yeah, sometimes when you're pressing the attack buttons, you might hit a head stop. And that happens if you're pressing buttons or cause frame delay, pretty much. There's nothing really much you can do about the uh, head stops for the most part. They just happen when it does. So even if you're pressing the attack button very fast, if there's a lot of uh, frame input in place when that happens, your punches might not come out immediately. Now I'm going to do an example of a shift. Now Hagar does have a problem with this uh, shifting, aka infinite, and that's only because you have one punch to work with. I recommend that you uh, learn how to do the shifting for uh, Hagar before you attempt to run this. It takes practice and it's going to take a lot of days and practice overall, but if you're very good at it, you shouldn't really have much of a problem. Just keep in mind that Hagar's uh, infinite is not very fast against certain enemies. He can do infinites on just about everyone, except for most of the bosses, uh, the Elliots or Eliases, unless you trap them at the top or bottom access. And sometimes the blockers may not be able to be uh, infinite at all because they can block your attacks. But that's pretty much uh, it for the uh, punching. So all of them deal 10 damage on easy and normal mode. But if you play this on hard or expert mode, your damage uh, output will be 6 for each punch. So in other words, he'll do 30 damage overall with a chain attack on easy and normal. Hard mode, he's going to deal up to 18 with a full chain. So for for neutral and forward jump, Hagar does attack. He will do this, the drop kick. The drop kick is pretty much Hagar's best range attack, aside from the uh, body blows. And overall, this is way better than the standing uh, jump kicks that Carlos and Maki do when they do standard jump kicks. So the one big difference about the drop kick, though, is that if you uh, if enemies are too far away when you do it, it knocks them out of bounds. So technically, if you're trying to group enemies or you can't reach them with uh, body splash, you might want to hit them hit them with a drop kick. But just keep in mind that uh, if you do that, you will knock enemies out of out of attack range. It is a good any error against uh, Roberts and Leons. And overall, it's pretty decent. It's also a very safe move, I might add. So for the uh, next part, uh, next jump attack, well, I should explain about the damage. Uh, Damage-wise, for easy and normal, the drop kick deals 11, which is actually one, one point higher than his body, body blow punches. Unfortunately, though, if you're playing this on hard and expert mode, you will deal 7. Now, of course, the Body Splash also has the same damage as the Drop Kick, so you're going to be dealing 11 on Easy and Normal, 7 on Hard or Expert. Now, the Body Splash can also be used in Reverse. It has a very unique property, is that if enemies are moving forward towards you, you will knock them the opposite way rather than knock them in the other way. So, this is actually a very good uh, grouping tool for the most part. So, I could do it like this. You don't want to be doing this for your overall damage. But it's actually pretty darn good for grouping enemies. It's probably better to just go for the two enemies rather than one. But if they decide to play hard again, then you probably want, will want to use that reverse uh, body splash on the one that's approaching from behind you. It's a very good... Uh, Good way to protect yourself from getting attacked from enemies from behind. Not to mention, if if by chance you knock them the opposite way, that works. And it's also a good way to get enemies into one side. 
Now, of course, there every once in a while, though, the body splash, reverse body splash will knock enemies the intended way. So don't get too comfortable thinking that all enemies will eventually be on, go to that one side when you do the body splash on them. My apologies there. Okay, so now that we cover the jump attacks, uh, we're going to go for the grabs. The triple headbutt that I just did right there is Hagar's probably best form of DPS. Probably more so over than his infinite. Now on easy and normal modes, the headbutts, which I tend to refer to them as knock-knock headbutts, uh, these headbutts damage for easy and normal are 5 for the first headbutt, 9 for the second, and 20 damage for the last one. So the, the combined damage all together for all three headbutts on easy mode is 34 damage. And that's arguably all together the strongest attack Hagar head does have. Now of course with all of his other attacks on hard and expert mode, it does get decreased by uh, 3 for the first one, 6 for the second, and 13 for the last one. So overall, that's going to be like 22 damage for Hard and Expert. But overall, the headbutts are like the best DPS form for Hagar. Of course, you can't do this to every enemy since Hagar has to target one specific enemy while he's holding the enemy. So for the next uh, command list, I'm going to go with the go with the vertical suplex right here. Now the vertical suplex damage is that uh, it deals 20 damage on easy and normal. And uh, for hard and expert mode, the vertical suplex does 13. But there is some problems with the uh, vertical suplex, unfortunately. And this is another reason why I don't really use it that much to grab enemies. So right there, I managed to, to I managed to successfully get all three enemies grouped together. But the problem is, is that uh, given the uh, enemy's AI being passive, sometimes they will avoid getting hit. Now right there, I had successful grouping. Technically, you want to make sure they're all grouped in one group when you're doing the chain throw or or regular throws. So I'm going to try again to set up an example where uh, where I try to group the enemy, but I fail in the process. Okay, that's not working. So right there, um, depending on your positioning when you're doing the vertical suplex, uh, if they're too far out of range by the time you uh, do the move, it will knock enemies into the uh, out of bounds area, so Hagar will not be able to capitalize. Technically, you want the enemies very close when you try to do this move, so you can group all of them together and take them all out with the infinite. Now, there is a problem with uh, another problem that goes along with the vertical suplex. And that is, unlike uh, Carlos and Maki's throws, which are pretty instant, uh, Hagar does have problems with his uh, vertical suplex, and it takes a few frames of startup. The whole animation for the entire attack is approximately uh, either two to three seconds overall. So that gives enemies some time to escape the attack if they choose to decide to move out of the way. But overall, this is a very good, it's still a very good attack overall. It's still one of Hagar's most damaging moves, aside from that last headbutt plus the extra joy. Might as well go over that next. So extra joy is uh, Hagar's Lariat, which I assigned to my A button. That deals 20 damage on uh, easy mode and uh, 13 on harder and expert difficulties. Oh yeah. 20 on normal and as well. So that pretty much covers that. Um, before I do anything else, I'm going to show you a trick right here. At least two of them. This is the chain throw. 
Um, this deals like overall 40 damage instead of Hagar's uh, 30 when you do that. You need to hold either down or up when you do a chain attack with enemies. So here's another trick. This is another reason why you want to assign your uh, extra joy button to to one of your main buttons rather than doing the B and Y and B together. Because right there I did did the same amount of damage as my chain throw by throwing the extra joy instead. So what that does is that instead of with either the chain thrower or what I call chain joys, you could deal 40 damage to enemies pretty much, which is way higher than uh, Hagar's normal 30 with his chain attack. It's something I learned. Uh, apparently, aside from Hagar, Maki can also do this as well. You can replace the last hit of her attack with the, the handstand kick. Of course, the, head, the handstand kick is kind of different because uh, when it hits enemies far away, it deals 25 damage. But if you're up close when you do it, it does like 17 according to Murficator. Now, of course, if you want to find out more about the damage formula for all the characters, I recommend you go to the... Uh, Speed run, speed demo, co I mean, speed demos archives, and check up uh, the thread I started called Final Fight 2 Planning. You'll find the, you'll find all the information I put on there, as well as a link to, to the damage formula on one of the pages. I can't take credit for that because Murphigator is the one who created the, created the, uh, the damage formula, and he deserves the credit. So. Uh, if you're interested to learn more about Final Fight 2 and what I've learned, even though my explaining is not good, feel free to check out the thread I started there. So technically this is uh, Hagar's fastest way of getting some damage off without resorting to chain throws. Now the one, one problem to keep in mind about chain throws though is that unfortunately when you uh, do chain throws and enemies come up from behind to attack you, uh, one of the problems there is that uh, you will no longer have invincibility frames. They took those out uh, in the first game when you did chain throws. Your character was pretty much invincible from all attacks. And this made Hagar pretty much almost unstoppable in the first game when he did uh, two punches to backdrop. He was invincible due to the iframes, but uh, Capcom pretty much removed those for the second game. So you can't really rely on using uh, chain throws to protect yourself. It is a good way to deal with enemies that are coming from behind though. For the most part. Okay, I'm gonna go back to, uh, to uh, back to the start point. And then we can uh, go over a few facts about uh, enemy movement in this game. In this game, you cannot rely heavily on enemy positioning. And that, and regrettably, that's because, one, the enemies appear at random spots, and that de depends on where your character is. So, let's say if I go down here. All the enemy... Of course, if you did see just there, the Scott was on one of the planes, but the mark... But the mech that was uh, on... That appeared was on the bottom plane. So apparently when enemies merge, they're gonna the AI will use the RNG to determine where to put them. So let's go ahead and check out what happens when I do decide to stay on this plane. So right there, the enemies, um, both enemies came up. Now of course, because I'm using the Wii U Virtual Console version, because I'm using Create Restore Points, those positions are kind of set because of that. But uh, whenever you start on a new game, for the most part, uh, the position will always change. It will not stay the same. So right here, so right here the enemies appear, most of them appear, the first two appeared at the top along with Hagar. The, uh, the Elijah that emerged, of course, emerged on the bottom planes below the top axis. So um, one thing to keep in mind about uh, Final Fight 2 that in regards to how enemies appear at force points is that uh, usually two enemies will appear on uh, one side while the other is appears on the other side. 
And depending on the amount of enemies you will fight, for the most part, they will all appear on different sides. So for this instance, I have uh, two enemies on the right, one on the left. Now, if I was to fight uh, six and three more additional enemies, I would have two on the left and one will appear on the right. So you might want to keep that in mind when you're uh, learning how to speed run the game, especially as setting up enemies and all of that. Of course, for this area, you only have like one enemy approaching on the left. Normally, if I hadn't defeated the Mick and Scott that appeared at the start of the stage, I would have had to deal with six enemies altogether. But technically, you do want to do the best you can to lure enemies to the top or bottom access if you can. And try to get chain throws if you can too. So right there, the enemies appeared on different planes because I moved up one. So you cannot rely heavily on enemy placements. And because the enemy AI does have a passive AI, you can't really rely too heavily on it. Now you can you can strike enemies uh, in between uh, in between planes when you attack them. It's, very, it's what I call thread the needle when you're trying to scope, go for hits in between planes. It's very hard to do if the enemies don't line up with the hitboxes. Now, the only enemies in this game that do have set positions, at least from my experience, are the Elix and the Roberts and Leons. But the problem is, is that the... Leons and Roberts are very unpredictable because they will sometimes jump at you rather than walk towards you. So anyway, that pretty much covers most of the enemy AI movements plus uh, what you should expect for how where enemies will appear and whatnot. So there are certain areas where you can despawn enemies, but it requires mostly chain throws. I will show you those when I get to this point, but from here on out, I'm going to pretty much uh, get started with the tutorial for round one, Hong Kong. But as I said before, you really do want to practice uh, performing shifting, aka uh, infinites. You're just going to have to learn how to deal with the head stops as it goes, because you, there really isn't a faster way to deal with them. So. Um, so when you first uh, get to the dragon head that's uh, on the ground, Mick and Scott will appear. Now their positions will be different depending on your uh, when you start your game, so it's never always the same. But you want to take those two out immediately. So we're going to go ahead and do this. I recommend doing the infinite on those guys. Serve energy, energy. And try to position all enemies right there. As you can tell, I moved up, moved a bit of bit, I mean a bit of uh, back and forth there, and that's to get all the enemies grouped up into one group. So right there, I took down all three enemies. Now, normally there is another way you could deal with this situation if the enemies aren't very cooperative. You could take out the bull that's on the left and do one punch and triple headbutts. Most of the enemies for this first part of the stage are not very strong in health. So one punch and three headbutts are a faster way of taking them out. I also recommend destroying that barrel once you defeat uh, Mick and Mark. I mean, uh, Mick and Scott. So for this part, you jump right here. And uh, that puts you in a position where you don't get attacked by Mech, but it also sets you up for a good uh, infinite there. Okay, so once your uh, character moves to that first part of the pipe, uh, Mech will start moving. Now, right here, once you cross the pipe completely, this is when all the other enemies for that force point start coming out. Uh, one of the... One thing you should keep in mind when you're dealing with Alice's and Johnny's, they are probably the most dangerous enemies in the entire game 
aside from the Andoris. And this is because these guys deal moderate to very severe damage with their uh, arm thrust attacks plus uh, bear hug. And considering the fact this is technology used for uh, Street Fighter 2, you should probably keep in mind that these guys can pretty much grab you pretty much the same way Zangief performs a spinning pile driver even if you're not close to him. These guys just deal brutal damage. They also tend to move in a zigzag formation. I'm going to keep this guy alive, but I'm going to focus on getting rid of these guys. So now that we got rid of all the enemies, we have just uh, Johnny here. So I'm going to try to attack him. Okay, that did not go the way I wanted. Now, technically, he will usually guard the attack, but what I was trying to do there is that if he guards the attack, I recommend jumping forward immediately. Because he will usually, he and Alice will usually move backwards. And when that happens, they will not try to grab you or anything. And that just sets you up to grab them and for whatever you want to do to them. Because for some odd reason, these guys are very hard to get an infinite going. They're actually more easier to defeat if you're using uh, Maki or Carlos with their shifting. Now, of course, this enemy right here I just defeated was an Elias. Now, these guys are very... Uh, he and Elliot are very different because these enemies, unlike the rest, tend to appear depending on your positioning on the plane. I mean, access. If I was at the topmost access, Elias will usually appear on the bottom most plane rather than the topmost plane. But if I was to have my character at the bottommost plane, he will be at the topmost plane. And in regards to movement, they always prefer to be always behind your character when you're dealing with enemies. They don't go in to attack you unless you're either right in front of them or when you're too busy dealing with enemies. Technically, you do want to get rid of them quickly if you can. I'm going to go ahead and create a, create a restore point right here for the next part so I can give you a general idea what to expect with the Elliots. For here, you want to do reverse jumps. You try to go up. So here's what happens when I go up. This guy is down here instead of going to the bottom. Watch what happens when I Elliot appears. Ooh, that's actually a good sell. Now, normally these guys don't usually group together that well, but if you could do that, that's very good. Technically, this is when you have had to really learn how to memorize the damage formula. All the enemies for this first part that we fight are pretty much around 50 to 45 HP at most. At least that's based on the amount of damage I flick with Hagar's punches. Uh, calculated. So to give you a good idea of how these guys operate, as you can tell because I was dealing with all those enemies, these guys uh, moved away. The AI has them programmed to pretty much focus mostly on getting behind your character and attacking. And they also move in a box formation. As you pretty much saw, the Elliot and the Elias moved up and down just now rather than trying to get behind me. So technically when they first emerged or try to get up after getting knocked down, I called out the V uh, pattern because Depending on where your character is or standing, uh, they will either move up or down depending on your what what most access plane you're on. If I'm at the topmost access, they will uh, pretty much stay on uh, either go up or down. But there's ways you can manipulate manipulate them in a situation to your favor. So right there, I was able to trap this uh, 
Elias on the bomb because I moved one plane up. Now, normally if I was on the same plane, bomb plane as he, he was, uh, he would have moved upward. But because I moved my character one plane up, he stayed on the bottom most uh, axis. Now, this is not a surefire way of getting an infinite off of uh, Elias or uh, Elliot because those guys will usually try to worm their way towards you when you're hitting them. Usually when you turn your back around, they move forward towards you. So it's very hard to set that up, of course. But that's just one way of dealing with it. So I'm going to show you this next one right here. So this time I'm going to move him up here. Okay, that didn't go the way I wanted to. I thought I got to the topmost plane. I'll try it one more time. So right there, the Elias did not go to the bottom plane. Now, for some odd reason, I don't know why the game does that, but because I was far away from the Elias when that happened, he chose to stay on the upper plane. Now, of course, if you were very close to him and you're both on the upper plane, he will indeed move down. But anyway, we'll continue with the with the uh, tutorial now. So basically, once you get through that force point right here, uh, you want to turn around, do this. Now, the reason why I did that backsplash on the barrel when I jumped over it, uh, barrels and crates in this game count as enemies. Now, normally, if you were playing this casually, there would have been a jack that would have appeared along with a mark on the left side. But because that barrel was there and I jumped over and destroyed it by that point, uh, I was able to despawn that mark, that jack there. So Mark is the only one that appears instead. Anyway, try to get these guys. Now, if, if Atlas right here gives you trouble, do the uh, reverse body splash, then do triple headbutts and, uh, I mean, double headbutts and, uh, and then the spinning power driver. Because that's the only way to uh, basically take out those enemies. If you try to do it with the triple headbutt, you need to do at least one more punch on them. And I got grabbed again. So this is what I was trying to show you last time. So if they do guard your punch, try to jump forward. And that basically sets you up for a, for a free grab. I normally don't use that on my speedruns. I really do need to do that. Okay. Just to give you a rehash of what happened there. So when this starts, you want to do this. Do that. Do this. Get these guys on the... You can also go for chain toys. You can also go for the uh, body splash. You can also go for one more punch plus three headbutts. Other than that, just grab him, do... Uh, do... Uh, Two headbutts plus power driver. But yeah, I forgot to mention about the spinning power driver. I thought I went through all the move lists, so that's my bad. So basically, uh, I'll show you the spinning power driver in a minute. But uh, in easy mode, the power driver does 22 damage. It's actually his strongest move in his entire arsenal. Of course, it's kind of a wherever one. It's kind of pointless because... Uh, both the suplex, the last headbutt, and the uh, extra joy also do 20 damage, which is pretty much close to uh, spinning pile driver damage. But technically, if you throw a drop kick or body splash on the enemy, and you, and then you add the uh, overall damage of the two headbutts and spinning pile driver, it does add a little bit more points of damage in a sense. Man, I can't believe I forgot about that spinning pile driver. Well, 
Live and learn, I guess. Alright. One more time on this area. Wipe these enemies out. Two punches on this guy, three headbutts. Now, this is another reason why you do not want to use one punch, three headbutts on Atlas's and Johnny's. At least for this part. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and create a restore point right here. So we can start going over to the next part. Now, um, once I move over here, so right there, normally you would have three enemies on screen. But there's something wrong here. And what could that be? And that's because there's an out-of-bounds case that, uh, that's not on screen, but it's off screen. That's actually affecting the enemy movement. Or, I mean, enemy placement. So instead of getting uh, Mick and Mark and Scott, we wound up getting Mick and Mark. So when you start off the stage, you want to do this. Jump back. Let the enemies come towards you. The next two enemies after those three are the Elliot and Cole. Now sometimes you won't have to deal with weapons or or anything for that matter. Sometimes you might get lucky and get a one up. But anyway, the enemies that appeared there were pretty much uh, Mick, uh, Elijah, and Elias, and then finally Scott. So there's only like four enemies there for the most part. Now technically if you don't get any weapon spawns, that's good. But try to avoid picking up the weapons because these weapons are not very good in Final Fight 2 for some odd reason. So uh, when you're ready to move forward, start moving downward. So you want to be at this position right here where my character is. And that's to make sure Mark doesn't get behind us. Technically what you want to do there is pretty much... Uh, thread the needle on those two and take them out quickly because that means you will only have to deal with three enemies on the next part. So anyway, just to give you a perfect example. We'll probably get an... Oh, we got no weapons this time, that's good. Now, if you don't have a whole lot of health loss, you can pretty much go for chain toys, but just keep an eye on the energy. So right here, we're going to try to thread the needle, which we succeeded in doing. Okay, we're going to create a restore point right here. So anyway, once you reach this part, uh, we're going to deal with three enemies, one of them being a Johnny. So that's the problem when you're dealing with the uh, suplex with Hagar. And when you're moving up and down with uh, characters, I recommend going diagonal rather than downward or upward. Another problem with uh, Hagar's uh, infinite is that the uh, there are gaps in his attacks. So that enemies can approach you from downward or well for that. So anyway, you want to do this right here if you can, because uh, there is a way you can despawn Scott, believe it or not. But technically the whole point of that is to pretty much do this. Now there's two ways you can do that, but unfortunately I wasn't very successful on that one. Basically what I just did was trying to despawn both, uh, I mean, trying to despawn Scott there. But I failed. And since I know I cannot do that on this point, I'm going to show you another trick. Since we can't try to despawn him, we're going to jump forward. Defeat this bull right here. Move forward. 
beat these guys up. Now, luckily I didn't have Elix troll me there, but you should be very weary when you're fighting Elix. Because if these guys stand around for a while, their electrodes will charge up and they deal more damage. Uh, they're actually more dangerous and harder in expert mode, and especially when they get their electrodes charged up, because if they charge at you or strike you with their uh, electrodes, you will lose a lot of health. I've had that happen to me like multiple times when I was playing expert mode. So be very wary when you're approaching Elec. I'll go ahead and create a restore point right here. So anyway, we get up to the final part of uh, one round one. So right here, if you're playing this on a marathon, you just squeeze through right here, pick up this uh, meat, this barbecue. Now, an interesting thing about the barbecue in this game is that it does not fully restore your entire health. It only restores roughly up to, I think, 95%, I believe. Now, normally, you wouldn't be able to fit through here, but I was able to do it just now. i never knew, known that until now. So if you're playing a marathon and you're trying to take safety strats, this would be the optimal safety strat for that point. Now, because we're at this point, the next two enemies we're going to be fighting at the start of this area is going to be a Mick and an Atlas. And since we're not speedrunning, I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, barbecue. So we're going to go on the bottom plane. Jump backwards. Failed to hit this Atlas. But technically, you want to take them out pretty quickly. Now, this is where uh, we get our introduction to Roberts and Leon's. Uh, when you're dealing with these enemies, or if you're playing the Japanese version, which is uh, Mary and uh, Eli Eliza, um, you do want to be make sh you do want to make sure you're up in the air and throwing out a jump kick or a drop kick in Hagar's case, because if these guys leap at you, these guys literally lock on to wherever your character was. So this makes them pretty just just as dangerous as e Elix. So you defeat these guys right here. Go below, go below here and break this second crate right here. The top crate will always have weapons. So right here is one one. Uh, if you're playing this on easy mode, uh, he will not have any enemy reinforcements, which is actually nice. And since we're playing on easy mode, his health is pretty low. Thankfully, Hagar is pretty much capable of doing an infinite on 1-1 uh, on one -one right here. I might as well go over the attacks. He has two different types of attacks. Uh, because I'm playing the international version, the uh, meat cleaver got censored. So it's I call it the inviso chop, just to give a reference to that. But anyway, he has the... Uh, Invisible Chop and the uh, regular Punch. His final move, of course, is the Elbow Drop. Now, he'll do this if, uh, if he gets knocked down, and he'll do this to move. So if you're too far away when, he, uh, when you're facing him, he'll do those hops to improve his speed. But technically, when he does the elbow drop, you can always perform the extra joy to protect yourself. And that actually keeps you safe from his attacks. That way you don't have to worry about moving. So there are two ways for what there, there are two ways for you to deal with Long One here. So we're gonna I'm gonna show you the basic way of dealing with him. If I can. Now 
Now, of course, that's the basic way of dealing with him. Sometimes you could go for the uh, headbutts instead. Now, sometimes the extra joy is a little bit more faster than the suplex. Technically, you want to make sure your character is parked uh, right there before you clear that stage. So I'm going to show you another trick of uh, defeating him, but it's a lot more riskier. Unfortunately, that was not what I wanted. But yeah, I'll try it again. I'm going to give it a few more tries, but there is a way to deal with one one without having to go for the infinite, but up close, but... Don't do that, one one But anyway, that's the strat for, that's the other strat. I don't really use that because uh, that is a very hard strat to set up to begin with because you do need to be outside of 1-1's uh, uh, AI attack range because if you're too close, he'll start attacking you. But the general idea is that if he walks right into your punch, he will stay put for at least one second and that gives you enough time to set up an infinite on him. But it's very difficult to set up because... For one, you only have one second. And another problem is, is that you only have uh, one punch to work with with Hagar. Because if you screw up at any point of uh, doing the infinite with him, that drops the uh, infinite and just makes it very hard to regain balance again. Not to mention it makes it more harder to deal with one one. But yeah, that's technically uh, how you fight one one. But if you were to fight him in normal, hard, or, or extra modes, the enemies will pretty much be uh, different depending on who you choose to, which difficulty you go through. If you're playing on normal, you'll fight uh, Mark and Jack first, then uh, Elliot and Elias. If you were to fight uh, one one in hard mode, uh, you would have to not only deal with those four enemies, but you also have to fight an Elijah that comes with them. And if you uh, play this on extra mode, you would have to deal with an Endori Jr., which is the last enemy that comes out. Not to mention that because of the enemies coming out, it just makes it very hard to set up the infinites. Because there is a very high chance of getting locked into hit stun or whatever and keeping you from doing any more infinites. So that is it is not very easy to fight one one on any of the other difficulties because I've still yet to find a, a safer means of uh, doing it, but just as fast. So this is another reason why you want to be playing on easy mode uh, because uh, with easy mode, you don't have to deal with the enemy reinforcements while you're fighting with one one and you can also set up the uh, infinite more easily. But yeah, it's pretty easy to lose control of the infinite while you're um, pressing the attack buttons and, uh, and the uh, D-pad for the most part. But technically I recommend this strat um, overall while you're playing on easy mode. I'm going to, to give you a general idea of how I do things, I'm going to show you uh, one complete run of the stage before I end it. Everything's set up. Now, before I do start, I'm going to take a swig of water. Oh, 
All right, we're ready to go. So before I do end this stream, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a complete run just to give you guys a general idea of how it does work and how I do things. Also, you want to be jumping forward whenever you can. Because that's Hagar's more faster option. Another advantage with uh, Hagar's uh, punches is that uh, he can hit enemies out of bounds, but you're basically going fishing when you're doing that, unfortunately. So yeah, this is good. This could probably take me some time before I get get an actual run going, but it just shows you how difficult it is to group enemies in this game. So right there, they pretty much moved up. But yeah, as you can tell, whenever I try to group enemies during a speed run, it just never ever goes well. For some odd reason, I get plagued. <laughs> but then again, that's one reason why I want to try to prove the naysayers wrong. As usual, when you're moving forward, always jump. Yeah, that was very unfortunate. Tried to go for the infinite right there, but I blew that one. Keep in mind the only things that uh, break Johnny and Atlas's guards is pretty much uh, extra joys, grabs, grab strikes, and throws. Decide to use the spinning power driver. Make sure you uh, use that to get yourself in position. I could have gone better, but normally I do very well. Much a lot more better there. Oh wow, I've been dropping frames. Yeah, I probably should have set this thing on 30 uh, FPS before I did this. Golly, I think this stream's about almost over. Thank you. 